Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Heart Ornamentation with Karen Marshallsey. This week we're going to be looking at one of the most common things that I'm asked about in playing traditional music and it's how do you do that triplety thing, you know, or how do you play a burl or well, what is it you're doing when you're doing that repeated, repeated note with your fingers? So that's what we're going to focus on this week. It is so important in pipe tunes especially and it's that really characteristic sound of a lot of Scottish music. Listen to the way the pipes play it, listen to what fiddlers do. It's very much a rhythmic effect once more. You're playing the same note several times so it's not really a harmonic effect although we are going to look later on at a way that you can use it to decorate another note which if you leave ringing out will of course add to the harmony. I call this a bees plat which comes from the Robert App Hugh manuscript but to be honest I played this movement in Scottish tunes long before I even had heard of the Robert App Hugh manuscript and I'm not really sure what I called it then I think I just called it a triplet. It's not really a classical triplet because it's not three even notes, the last note is longer. Uh, some people call it a thistle, I've heard that name as well. There's, remember terminology is not standardised in traditional music and that can be quite a good thing because it's, it's nice to hear different perspectives and different names that people have for things. So let's have a look at how to actually play this bees plat. I'm going to anchor my thumb on C. I'm in a C tuning and I'm going to play it on the A string. This A above middle C and the E above it are also the E below, interestingly enough, are pretty much the strings that I most commonly use for this uh, decoration. It, that simply reflects the music that I play and the pipe tunes that I play. Obviously it can be played absolutely anywhere, but I'm going to demonstrate here because that's where I'm most commonly playing it. So I'm anchoring my thumb on the C. If you remember the 3-2 Durham from episode two, and if you've not watched episode two, I think it would be worthwhile going back and watching that first. That 3-2 was in preparation for this 4-3-2. So, you can place your fourth finger on to start with and play it. Now, let it ring before you bring your third finger on. If you bring your third finger on too quickly, it stops the sound. You get the whole harp ringing, but the actual note has stopped. And this is one of the, the classic problems I'm going to tell you now, just so that you're aware of it when you're learning. I don't know how many time pipers have told me, oh yeah, harp players, they think they're playing burrows or triplets and you only ever hear two notes, you know? And it's true because I think as harp players we often think, oh it's, it's such a quick movement, it's, I've got to get my fingers on as quickly as possible. But if you bring your fingers on to a string that's already playing, you're only really hearing the last note sounded. If you bring your fingers on too quickly, you're stopping the sound. So we're going to practice it slowly and steadily in a really controlled way. Play that fourth finger and let it ring out. Bring your third finger on and don't think about placing it, just think about a movement that comes on and hits the string in passing. And the same with your second finger. So you have ended up in this nice, relaxed, good position, but we've not started out in this classic fingers down, thumbs up position. If you normally play like that, that's absolutely fine, but just bring your fingers up to right angles more to the string to actually play the decoration and then go back to a more downwards position if that's the way you normally play. So, fingers more at right angles to the harp. I pull my three and my two back quite a bit. And this is sort of staggering the fingers, if you like, so that they don't all come on too quickly. It's not this, it's not the quick swipe that everybody seems to think it is. You're not really hearing three proper distinct notes there, no matter how hard I try. And they will be out of tempo. It's got to be at the relative speed of the tune you're playing. It's not just you drop this in as fast as possible, no matter what you're doing. So, four on the string, thumbs anchored. Three is going to come on and play it. Two is going to come on and play it. So three clean strikes on the string. And you can gradually speed that up in a controlled fashion. Now 
So you can practice it on a downward scale. Or an upward scale. If you do it downward, it's nice and clean because your thumb can follow behind and damp. If you do it upward, everything's ringing. So it's a very different effect, but it's worth experimenting with both to see what you like. So, want to try it with me? Downwards from C after two. One, two. things with any uh, look at ornamentation of course is being very clear in your head whether you're playing grace notes or whether you're playing tune notes and or in this case scale notes because this is one of the, the most uh, important movements or fingering gestures that's used for both decoration and for playing tune notes sometimes at the same time in this scale if you think about it the scales what we're doing is we've done Four and three are decorating the tune note that two is going to play. Because the tune's going. So here I know clearly in my head that I'm playing this piece plat of this four three two to decorate that last note, which is going to be the one that's stronger and slightly longer as well. It's not, people call it a triplet, it's not as even as a classical triplet. I know from the battles I've had uh, typesetting with Sibelius, and Sibelius of course plays back exactly what you put in, and I used to write them all as, as triplets, and it would just sound wrong, it would sound very, very stilted. Uh, so now I either play it as two little grace notes before a tune note, or two semi-quaver, quaver just to get the effect. I'll think about what that is in American. Uh, two notes with, with a double beam and then one note with a single flag. Uh, that's the best I can do at the minute. My mind's gone blank on whether it's eighth notes or sixteenth notes or what they are. Okay, so we'll do this together after two. One, two. Two. Remember, only go as fast as you can cope with that at the minute. It's just as effective as etc. Only, only go as fast as you can play and as fast as the tune requires you to play. There's, there's no benefit in speed just for the sake of it. And certainly not at the cost of inconsistencies in your playing. So we've got a nice steady three note sound. Uh, we're not making that classic harpy, only hearing two of them. We're not trying to be too fast, we're just being nice and steady and controlled and we've got a good intention. As I say, just to recap, it's right angles to the string, but your fingers, I hold fingers three and two, slightly pulled back and it's as if your fingers are drawing a little, little semicircle there. Your hand isn't moving. I don't want to say it's a rolling motion because your hand isn't moving. It's literally just your fingers doing this and closing up. You can also play the scales on a note that's already ringing. So play the tune note twice, the scale note. Etc. So long and short. So you're playing the first tune note. This is where, remember, you have to be real clear what's a grace note, what's a tune note, or here a scale note. The first two are grace notes. And 
as ever, for me, the next step is I've worked it out, I've played it on a scale. I want to jump about different intervals and see if I can get a little tune. Something along those lines. Another good way to practice it is with this little Uina Kashka, the, the Easter Eggs tune, especially that skeleton version that we looked at in episode two, where you're just coming. Remember, you can take that first note with your left hand, if you'd like to, of each phrase. But we're going to decorate this middle one now This is where you have to be mindful of what you're playing. The tune is going and we played. So four and three, we're playing decorations onto this note here. That two is the one that's playing the tune note. It's stronger and it, it rings longer. decorations but you need to play that tune note first and you play the B's plat as a decoration going up to the next note so you would he here you would have so the decoration to practice would be over lots of different intervals. Fourths, fifths, etc. So, <clears throat> doing it this way, this tune note, that string is already vibrating when you come on with your fourth finger so you can't place that fourth finger in advance it's just to come needs to come on and strike the way three and two do so you've got and that's something that I use quite a lot as well So you can also work up a really good piping effect, a, a sort of Pibroch-like or Pibroch-esque effect by playing a lower note and do, decorating a 4-3-2 B's plat on it on your way up to a higher note. like that uh, and it, it is sort of reminiscent of, of Pibrochs. See how comfortable you, you can go. I, a sixth is probably as far as I take it except I do do an octave as well. But it's kind of awkward. 
awkward and I wouldn't really bother about that too much until you're really comfortable with everything else. So you could practice that on an ascending scale. Up to the sixth and then we'll go back down. Obviously everything's ringing though, so you might want to experiment. See if you can hear the difference in the first one I left everything ringing. The second one I'm damping it out. And all I'm doing is when I go back onto that low C, my thumb is coming in to touch out the note that it played before it moves up to play the next note. last one. Uh, there's a little extra thing you can do, it works really well for the last note in a sequence. You're playing the tune note, you're doing your 4-3-2, so tune note, 4-3-2, 1, 4-3-2-1. The thumb goes a different way, so it's going to sound different instantly it's a very strong note to end on. So if you get 4-3-2 going, if your 3-2s are great, your 4-3-2s are good, try a 4-3-2-1. Again, like everything else, you can practice these anywhere. Just create little patterns. You can do it in scales as well. everything's ringing out but that's not really a, a very tune-like life-like example so I think that's fine if it's a good way to practice. So one of the best things really I think for practicing B's plats or triplets is just to play tunes and it's something that I use quite a lot when I, I write tunes uh, there's a tune, probably the first one that I wrote that uses a lot of these is called The Rhymer's Reel. Uh, I recorded it on my album, The Road to Kenna Craig, and I think I've, yes, it's in volume three of my Clarsa collection, Advanced, volume three. But I'll just play the tune. <laughs> first tunes I wrote using these these triplet bees plats going on. Uh, we're not going to look at that one today but it is in the volume three if if you want to practice up once you've got it going. The one we're going to look at today is one that I wrote during lockdown and it's called the Zoom Fires Reel. So I think it was June 2020. Uh, Lauren Scott, a wonderful harp player from down in England, uh, she instigated these virtual Kayleys, so several of us would, would join together over Zoom on a Sunday night to keep ourselves sane during lockdown and we'd play tunes to each other and talk about what we'd been doing that week. So I wrote this tune for the group and for Lauren and it's called The Zoom Fire's Real because we were all 
gathering around Zoom fires rather than campfires. So I'll play the tune first. tune of the Zoom Fires reel, first of all. So there's two tune note A's going to the B, back to the A, up to the D, back to the A, coming down A, F. Don't worry too much about what fingers you're playing these repeated A's. I wouldn't play them like that if I was actually just playing two A's. I would change my fingering. But we're going to change it because we're going to do the decoration. We're going to put the bees flat in there. It is one of the changeable things. Yes, I know you've been told you've worked really hard to keep your fingering nice and safe and secure. And that gives you security and solid phrasing and helps you memorise everything. And I totally get all that. And here I am telling you just to be a little bit more fluid with it. I'm afraid it is just... The way it is, you do have to be quite fluid with your fingering if you want to play tunes in a traditional style and put your ornaments in different places, different times. And you still have to be in control though. So I think the key to this is being really clear in your head which are tune notes. And these two A's are tune notes. to do but think of it as and you can do the you can put a little cut on the way down as well so the next phrase is coming up from the D three fingers on second under. You can change fingers on that F if you like. We're going to run down four fingers missing out the G. Thumb takes the B because the B is a stress note. It's on the beat. So First phrase. We start repeating. Thumb goes to the A, but this time our third goes underneath and we're going to climb up. So thumbs on the A, third's going to the B, cross my second under, take the E and the F. And that's the A part. with these B's plats in. So it's a great place to give you practice in a tune setting. So let's have a look at the second part. We're starting up in this D. Basically going up to the E, down to the A, back up to the E again. My second is going to cross underneath to the F. 
we're just going to play it twice just now because that's the two tune notes A B A right up at the top F to A so you're coming here I'm playing that fourth and I bring my second on to the E because I'm not going high enough up to warrant bringing my third on to that so four two one two third's gone to the B Actually take it with my third finger in practice because we're starting off with the first phrase again. Starting off with the, this phrase, slightly different ending. Here we're going to go down. So you're coming down. damp the ending off in this tune so this is the second part and it's this F that gets the B's plaque gets the decoration in the second part because that's the whole point of working on this tune just now. is real especially for practicing B's plats. This was actually the I think the very first tune I did on my Patreon in August 2020. Uh, it will still be up there because all my Patreon stuff stays up once you join you get access to everything uh, and I think I did just a very simple left hand. Going down to the octaves again DNA going to A and D for the second part bring your left hand up quite close on this F now walk up the chord to that A and take the B. Octave Ds. Sorry, octave Ds. Now here run the F and the A. Octaves with the fifth in the middle, walk up and down. Go to the B. A, D to end. I'll stick that arrangement. 
arrangement in this week's handout as well. The link for the handout will be in the description. There's a small charge uh, or more if you would like to give more and it just helps me keep keep on being a musician in these difficult times and creating this material for you. So let me just play the tune through a few times. This won't be a notated version. It's just more realistically what I might do with my left hand. This isn't really the scope of these workshops, it's possibly future workshops. Uh, but I, in the same way that I don't keep my ornamentation exactly the same every single time, nor do I keep my left hand the same every single time. And again, that comes from uh, my traditional music style and background. So let's just play you through the Zoom Fires reel. <laughs> Tuning uh, is an example we were looking at Islam Krinya Gaunambo. I think that was the way we played it in the first episode, and in the second episode, we did Little Finger Platts. But this time we're going to look at how you could put in a B's plat on the way up and it would probably be where I did some of those cuts. In episode one I was cutting up from F to B. I can hear myself doing a B's plat there. With or without that cut down. I might do it there, but feels a little bit more laboured. I much prefer it on this F here. So that would be one good thing to do. We've already looked at it in the skeleton tune of Oina Kashk. I don't think I really would put it in very much in Hikambata, but let's have a look at So if you go back into a, a C tuning, it would fit in in a few places in the Cave of Gold and Uivanor. That's that first phrase, remember. This is the sort of tune that you can layer up and I, I do have a, a performance version that I play of this. I'll see about sticking a video up on YouTube. It's already recorded. It's not actually up there yet. Uh, and I might well write it all out. But this is the type of tune where you can really layer up your versions as, as you go through each time you repeat it. And something like that would be a classic. So you're playing the first note. And the tune's going G, A, but I'm going to decorate this G with two little grace notes in front of it so it becomes a 4, 3, 2. Or what would be 
very nice if we change it round with a beat and a little cut down. So always take what we've looked at in the past, and that tunes in episode two's handout. Always take what we've looked at in the past or tunes you know already or are working on and see if you can find a place to fit these in naturally. You might have to, it might feel quite awkward and quite artificial at first, but just think carefully and, and uh, just, just, yeah, just think about where you're putting them and listen to what the effect is and decide if it seems right or not. Because at the end of the day, you're the one who's playing it and if it sounds right to you, then that's, that's, that's what matters. Well, I hope you found this ornamentation workshop useful. This is the, the third of a series of seven, and I really hope you're going to be practicing your bees plaits, these nice 432 triplety sounding things, the very Scottish sounding burrs or thistles or burrows or whatever you want to call them. I hope you're going to practice them up and incorporate them into tunes. It would be lovely if I ever hear someone playing the Zoom Fires Reel, that would be great. Uh, loads of other tunes that you can put them into as well. I'm going to add a couple of clips now into the end of this workshop just to show that these techniques I'm showing you are not just for modern levered gut strung Klarsachs. This is my lighter strung Klarsach that was made by Jack Yule in Pennycook at the time and it's fantastic for playing traditional music but you can play it on anything, any harp you have, anything really. So the first clip is from my playing at the Balmoral Hotel on their pedal harp. I play there regularly for afternoon tea, so there probably is a little bit of noise going on in the background. And it's the Rhymer's Reel, the piece that I demonstrated earlier on in the workshop. So this is it on pedal harp. strong harp this is an Ardaval rose and this is a, a, a sort of companion tune it was an earlier tune Thomas the Rhymer was a piece of music that I wrote as a longer sort of through composed piece for harp but there was also accordion and strings and uh, saxophone and all sorts of instruments on it and what I was doing was I was taking this the story of the ballad of Thomas the Rhymer who was taken off to fairyland for seven years and this tune that you're going to hear here on the Wirestrung harp is the Rhymer's March. And this was the tune that I imagined Tamas sitting playing, leaning up against the Eildon tree by the banks of the river as one lovely summer's day, he was just sitting there playing his harp when the Queen of the Fairies rode up to him. So this is the Rhymer's March played on my Wirestrung harp. You will see a couple of other different techniques that we're going to talk about later on, particularly one called coupled hands, where your left hand or your lower hand is taking some of the tune notes and sometimes, as I'm doing here, uh, doubling it an octave below as well. That's something we're going to talk about a little bit later, but it's a good demonstration, I think, of these bees plaits on wire and I think there's beats and a few other things in there as well, so hope you find this useful. Thank you. 